Okay, so I would like to go over chapter 9, lesson 7 with you all. I wanted to review theorem 911, theorem 912, and theorem 913, so you have no trouble at all doing your homework. So theorem 911 says, when two chords, so chord AB and chord CD, intersect inside the circle, then the product of the segments of one chord, this segment AP and this segment PB, when you multiply those two together, it will equal the product of the segments of the other chord, CP and DC. So I'm going to write that out. So if you multiply the length of AP, this segment, and PB, you should get the same answer as when you multiply the two segments of the other chord that is intersecting, CP multiplied by PD. So let's see if that works. If AP is 3 and PB is 8, we have 3 times 8, does that equal CP is 2 and PD is 12? So 8 times um, 3 is 24 and 2 times 12 is 24. So that's what theorem 911 says. It says when you have a circle and you have two chords that intersect with inside, inside the circle, then the length of this multiplied by the length of this equals the length of this multiplied by the length of that. So AP times PB is equal to CP times PD. We'll do a little practice with that in just a moment. I'm going to just go ahead and tell you the other two theorems so that we can do practice with them all together. Okay, now you can see this is different. This is not two chords inside of a circle. This is something that is meeting outside of the circle. Uh, this is a secant, which is just a chord that extends beyond the circle. And here is another secant. So theorem 912 says that when two secants are drawn to a circle, or within a circle, that meet at an outside point. So this secant meets at point B, and so does this one. Then the product of one whole um, secant and its external segment is equal to the product of this secant and this external segment. So let me explain that to you in a little bit more clearer terms. So what that's saying is that this entire segment, A all the way over to P, multiplied by the part of it that's outside of the circle, BP, is equal to the other entire secant segment multiplied by the part that's outside of the circle. So this is different. In our first example, we were multiplying just different these two parts, this times this multiplied by this times this. But when you are meeting outside of the circle and you have secants, it's different. It is not 2 times 6. It is not this part times this part. That's a common mistake. So make sure that you look at this really clearly so you don't have the annoyance of um, messing it up in your homework and then trying to figure it out again. Theorem 912 says that this entire segment, AP, multiplied by the part outside of the circle is equal to this entire segment multiplied by the part outside of the circle. So let's see if that works. The entire segment, AP, is this 2 plus 6. So the entire segment is 8. And you want to multiply that by this part right here that's outside of the circle, which is 6. Now we have to look at this entire segment. Remember, don't make the mistake of separating these. It's not the same as the other theorem. This entire segment is 8 plus 4. So that is 12. And we're going to multiply it by the part that's outside, the external segment, which is 4. 8 times 6 is 48. 12 times 4 is 48. So again, theorem 912 says that when you have two secants that meet together in a point outside of the circle, and we're going to label them A and B, and this one C, D, then this entire AP multiplied by the um, segment that's outside of the circle, the external segment, BP, is going to be equal to this entire secant segment, CP, multiplied by the external part, dp. Again, we're going to practice that in just a moment, but I want to tell you the last theorem, which is theorem 913, which is similar, only this time you have a secant segment, just like the last one, but then you have just a tangent. It's just a segment that touches the circle in just one point and then goes out. 
and they again are meeting outside of the circle. So when this happens, then what you have is the entire secant segment, just like last time, AC, multiplied by the external part, which is BC, is going to be equal to this tangent squared, meaning this tangent segment multiplied by itself again, because the whole thing is outside of the circle. So what that means is, let's look at that. We have AC and this whole segment equals nine. We're gonna multiply it by what is external, what is outside of the circle, which is four. And then we're gonna multiply it by this tangent segment squared, six squared or six times itself. So 36 equals 36. So segment, I mean, sorry, theorem 913 says when you have a secant that meets outside of the circle at a point with a tangent, then we're going to call these different letters, C, D, and E, and we'll call this F. Then this entire secant segment, C, E, multiplied by the part outside of the circle, D, E, is going to be equal to this entire tangent, F, E, multiplied by itself, or F, E squared. Okay, so let's do some practice with those three theorems. We're going to take a look at this example. If I have a circle and I have two chords that intersect, theorem 9-11 um, says that when those two chords intersect, then the smaller part of one times the smaller part of the, of the same one is equal to the smaller part of this one times the smaller part of that one. So let's look and see if we can figure out a problem. We're going to call this 12 and this little part here 2. And we're going to say that this is 3 units long. And we're going to call this x. How can we find out what x equals? Well, if we put some letters in here to make it a little bit easier to follow, we can see these are two intersecting chords. So AE times EB, that segment has to be equal to CE multiplied by ED. So AE is 12. We're gonna multiply that by EB, which is two. That has to be equal to CE, which is three multiplied by x. We don't know what ed is. We're trying to find that out. So now we have 12 times 2 is 24. 24 equals 3x, so x is equal to 8. That's how you would figure that one out. Let's take a look at another problem to make sure that you have no trouble with your homework. Okay, we're going to do one that has to do with the third theorem that we talked about today, the one with the secant and a tangent. We're going to have a secant, which is a chord that extends beyond the circle, and a tangent, which is just a line segment that touches in only one point. And we're going to say that this is 18, and this is 6, and this is x. So remember, with a situation like this, we have this entire secant, AC, multiplied by its external part, BC, is equal to the tangent multiplied by itself. So let's go ahead and try that. We have this entire secant segment, which is 18 plus 6, which is 24, multiplied by the external part, multiplied by 6, is going to be equal to x squared, because it's x times itself. 24 times 6 is 144, equals x squared, so x is the square root of 144, so x in this case equals 12. Okay, we're going to make sure that you have practice with theorem number 912, which is one that has two, two secants meeting on an outside point. So in this circle, we'll have this secant, which will be eight units long inside the circle and four outside the circle. And then we're going to have another secant that will be six units outside of the circle and then something inside of the circle. We don't know what that is yet. So when you have two secant segments, then the way you figure that out is the entire secant, AB, multiplied by the external part. So eight plus four is 12. And we're gonna multiply that by this external segment, which is four. And that is going to equal this entire segment, which is six plus X, 
I'm going to put that in parentheses, multiplied by this just external part, which is 6. So when you write this um, total, x, 6 plus x, put it in parentheses so that you do this distributive property correctly. So 12 times 4 is 48. 6 times 6 is 36 plus 6x. Subtract 36 from both sides and you get 12 equals 6x. Divide each side by 6 and you get x equals 2. So that's how you would find x. Let's go over let's go over three more and then I think you'll be all set. Okay, so we have a circle right here. This one is going to use the first theorem that we talked about because we're going to have two chords that meet inside the circle. This part is going to be eight in, uh, units long. This is six. This is two. And they're going to want you to figure out what X is. So when they cross inside of the circle, then that's when you just use the simple segments of each chord. So we have eight multiplied by X equals six multiplied by two, which is 12. And x then equals 12 divided by 8, which is the same thing as 3 divided by 2, or 1.5. So either 3 halves or 1 1.5. Okay, two more, two more ones to practice, and then you'll be all ready to go. So in this circle, we have a secant, two secants meeting outside of the circle at a point. This equals x and this equals 5, this equals 9, and this equals 6. All right, so the two secants meeting outside of a point. We multiply the entire first secant, which is 5 plus x. It is not 5x. Don't make that, it is not 5x. Don't make that mistake. It is not 5 times x. This entire length is 5 plus x more. Put it in parentheses. You multiply the entire length by the external part, which is 5. So 5 times the whole length of the secant is equal to this entire length, which is 9 plus 6, which is 15. And you multiply that by the external part, which is 6. So now do the distributive property. You get 25 plus 5x equals 15 times 6, which is 90. Subtract 25 from each side, and you have that 5x is equal to 50. Did I do that right? Uh, 65 and then X is equal to 15 13 sorry about that 13 13 times 5 is 65 so X is equal to 13 all right <clears throat> one more I want to practice with you with the tangents here we have a circle and we have a secant that meets outside, but it meets with a tangent. So this one's a little different. This is 4x. The length from here to here is 4x, and the external length of that secant is x. And this tangent is 20. So what we need to do is multiply the entire length. So that's 4x plus another x. 4x plus 1x is 5x. So this whole length is 5x. And we need to multiply that by the external length, which is x, and set that equal to 20 times itself. Because remember, you square the tangent length, 20 squared. So now we have 5x times x, which is 5x squared, equals 20 times 20, which is 400. Now you divide <clears throat> each side by 5, and you get 80, and you take the square root of 80, and we need to simplify that. We need to find a perfect square that goes into 80. That perfect square would be 16, I think. 16 times 5 is 80. So this would be x equals the square root of 16 times the square root of 5, which simplifies to 4 times the square root of 5. So that's the answer there. Good luck with your homework.